There are so many amazing wizards and witches in J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World. Have you ever pondered who could beat who in a one-on-one -on -one match? We've pondered that ourselves, and all that pondering led us to creating this list of the 20 most powerful witches and wizards in the world of Harry Potter. And just a heads up, while we're listing these standout magic masters in no particular order, we can all agree that Albus Dumbledore is the greatest wizard of all time. I mean, right? Let's kick things off with the boy who lived himself. Harry Potter might have spent the first 10 years of his life not knowing he was a wizard, but once he arrived at Hogwarts, he proved to be a natural. He became the youngest Quidditch seeker in a century, and was particularly adept in his defense against the Dark Arts classes. When the wicked Professor Umbridge forbade her students from using magic in the classroom, Harry took it upon himself to train his classmates, forming Dumbledore's army with his best buds Ron and Hermione. He's resourceful, thoughtful, and loyal, always putting the needs of others before his own. Uh, and yeah, let's not forget the fact that he took on a basilisk in the Chamber of Secrets, a whole legion of Dementors, and ended up defeating one of the most powerful wizards of all time, the Dark Lord himself, Voldemort. You know, no big deal, just all in a day's work for the Chosen One. And of course, we'd be remiss if we didn't take the time to mention one of Harry's best friends, Hermione Granger. Hermione always functioned as the brains of the operation, and Ron and Harry would be the first to admit they wouldn't have survived without her. Despite her muggle upbringing, Hermione quickly developed a reputation as being the brightest witch in her class. Her encyclopedic knowledge on all things magical made her the go-to resource at every turn, and in nearly every case, she had a ready solution. When the boys were all wrapped up in Devil's Snare, she's the one who figured out how to free them. When they needed to spy on Draco Malfoy to determine if he was the heir of Slytherin, Hermione was the one who concocted the Polyjuice Potion. She even helped Harry travel through time to rescue Buckbeak and his godfather Sirius Black. Is there anything she can't do? While she might not be powerful in the sense of physical strength, she's the perfect example of brains over brawn. Albus Dumbledore is the greatest sorcerer in the world. Hey, if Harry Potter said it, it must be true. Seriously though, was there any question about who the greatest wizard or witch ever was? He's taken on Grindelwald and Voldemort, and lived to tell the tale. In fact, his defeat of Grindelwald earned him the Order of Merlin. He's considered to be a master of transfiguration, stood in as a youth representative for the Wizen Gamot, and has won countless awards for spellcasting, alchemy, and much, much more. But more than all of this, Dumbledore Dumbledore was a great man. His troubled childhood and upbringing taught him the importance of compassion and understanding. Though he'd been offered the role of Minister of Magic multiple times, he declined it in favor of serving in an educational role. His humility and his wisdom were crucial to bringing down Voldemort, and his impeccable leadership led countless witches and wizards, Harry and company included, through many a dark time. But of course, Voldemort is a close runner-up to being the most powerful wizard of all time. I mean, come on, the entire wizarding community was afraid to say his name. That's pretty crazy. As a young boy, Tom Riddle showed many signs of the twisted and powerful wizard he would become. For example, during his time at Hogwarts as a student, he reopened the Chamber of Secrets, causing the death of one moaning Myrtle. But it wasn't until he left Hogwarts that the true extent of Riddle's evil showed itself in spades. He donned his new Voldemort identity, lost his his nose, because, you know, noses are overrated when you're a dark lord, and waged war on the entire wizarding world. If there's one evil wizard who could give Voldemort a run for his money, it's Gellert Grindelwald. Sadly, Grindelwald will have to make do with the reputation of being the second most dangerous wizard of all time. Still, that's nothing to shake a wand at. Besides, Grindelwald paved the way for Voldemort and his followers to follow, so you have to give him some credit for being the OG evil wizard. Severus Snape, the Half-Blood Prince, misunderstood outcast, and let's be real here, kind of a jerk. But that's neither here nor there. The honest to Merlin truth is that Snape is one of the true heroes of J.K. Rowling's Potter saga. His love for Harry's mother Lily drove him to protect her son and play a pivotal role in Voldemort's downfall. And aside from all of that, he's one of the greatest potions masters of all time. As a young wizard, he created spells, such as Sectum Sempra and Muffliato, and created some incredible potion shortcuts Harry was able to use to best his classmates. 
Alistair Moody, also known as Mad-Eye Moody, is another top pick for one of the most powerful witches and wizards in this universe. Dubbed one of the greatest aurors of all time, Moody managed to capture countless dark wizards and witches during his career. In fact, some would say he was responsible for capturing the most dark witches and wizards. It's unfortunate that Potter fans didn't get to spend much time with the guy. While he was introduced in Goblet of Fire, it turned out that this Moody was just Barty Crouch Jr., using Polyjuice Potion to disguise himself. We got to see Moody strut his stuff in Order of the Phoenix, but he bit the dust at the beginning of Deathly Hallows. Bummer. Let's not forget one of our other favorite Hogwarts professors, Remus Lupin. This guy is arguably the best defense against the dark arts teacher Harry and his classmates ever had. Not that the competition is particularly fierce, but still. Obviously, the fact that Lupin is a werewolf factors into his strengths, but it's his thoughtfulness, his cunning, and his kindness that truly make him rise above the pack. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> totally didn't mean to make a wolf reference right there, but hey, we'll take it. During his brief tenure as a professor, Lupin demonstrated a vast knowledge and understanding of magic. As a member of the Order of the Phoenix, he was on the front lines during the first battle with Voldemort. And let's not forget he was the one who helped Harry master the complex Patronus charm. And all this while battling his own fight with werewolf is, is that what you call it? What is the official medical terminology for someone afflicted with being a werewolf? And how could we mention Lupin and not include Nymphadora Tonks? Oh, sorry, we mean Tonks. You know how she gets when you call her Nymphadora. Don't Call me Nymphadora. Tonks was the youngest member in the Order of the Phoenix, which already gives you an idea of just how powerful she was. She's held her own in many a battle, including the big throwdown in the Department of Mysteries, as well as the Battle of Hogwarts, where she, well, okay, yeah, technically she didn't survive that one. But that doesn't change the fact that she was awesome. Beyond being an excellent witch, Tonks was also a metamorph magus. This is the fancy term for her being able to transform her appearance, as evidenced by her constantly shifting hairstyles. No doubt this gave her a distinct advantage when infiltrating enemy territory. Kingsley Shacklebot is another member of the Order of the Phoenix. Not only is he a powerful wizard, but he's basically the secret agent of the Harry Potter world. He served undercover at the Ministry of Magic, gathering information for the Order of the Phoenix. Eventually, he actually became the Minister of Magic, and unlike his predecessor, Rufus Scrimmager, he actually survived his encounter with Voldemort. Kingsley took part in numerous battles with the Order, and even showed up for the Battle of Hogwarts to perform some pretty awesome magic moves. Like that one spell where he freezes the guy in midair, and then blasts him back out of the window. Yeah, that was cool. We feel like we should mention Hogwarts founders as well. Okay, yeah, if you want to get all technical about it, the Hogwarts founders should take up four different entries here. But we still have lots of awesome witches and wizards we want to give shoutouts to. So we're just gonna deal with it, right? Godric Gryffindor, Rowena Ravenclaw, Helga Hufflepuff, Salazar Slytherin. These four incredible witches and wizards united with a common goal, to create the single greatest school for witchcraft and wizardry the world had ever known. And what do you know? They succeeded. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. All four of them had unique skills they brought to the table. Gryffindor was an excellent duelist. Slytherin was, in true Slytherin fashion, a superb mind reader. Ravenclaw was an expert architect, and Hufflepuff was, well, she was Hufflepuff. No, seriously though, she had the gang beat with her charms mastery. If even and one of them had founded Hogwarts, it would have been incredible, but a school formed by the entire group? That's what's up. Professor McGonagall! Not gonna lie, we absolutely love this woman. Not only does she possess a fierce firecracker of a personality, she's also, as Ron would describe it, bloody brilliant. She's a gifted professor and exactly the kind of person you want on your side. She doesn't take any nonsense from anybody. It doesn't matter if you're a student, a professor, or something in between. She will hand your sweet booty over to you on a silver platter without batting an eye. And look, we already knew Professor McGonagall was the total bomb.com, but then the Battle of Hogwarts came around, and she really got to strut her stuff. There, she revealed she was even more incredible than we had originally thought. She took on Snape single-handedly and won, and she led the way through the battle, remaining on the front lines the entire time. And on the complete opposite side of the good-bad spectrum, we have Bellatrix Lestrange. This lady is totally bonkers, and not the good Luna Lovegood kind of bonkers. She's just flat-out nuts and pure evil. She tortured Frank and Alice Longbottom, Neville's parents, to insanity, and faithfully served at Voldemort's side as his most loyal follower. It's her total lack of morals that made her such a valuable aid to his cause. It's also what made her so incredibly terrifying, because it's not just her abilities that make her 
her dangerous. No, it's the fact that she doesn't seem to have a conscience whatsoever. Jiminy Cricket wouldn't have the slightest clue what to do with her. She'd probably just torture him to insanity too. Is there no end to her cruelty? On top of all of this, she ended up killing Sirius Black. No small feat considering his skills. We don't want to give Bellatrix Lestrange too much credit. She is a raving lunatic after all. Let's focus instead on someone way more lovable, Neville Longbottom. Now, to be fair, Neville isn't necessarily anyone's standard idea of a powerful wizard. When he first started out at Hogwarts, he was a hopeless cause. He was an easy target for bullies and couldn't get through a day without messing up in class or forgetting the common room password. But although he wasn't particularly adept in the ways of magic, he possessed a fierce loyalty to his friends and showed a great amount of courage on numerous occasions. In Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, it was as simple as standing up to Harry, Ron, and Hermione when he knew they were going to do something that could potentially hurt Gryffindor's reputation. By the series' conclusion, he was on the front lines of the Battle of Hogwarts and ended up destroying one of Voldemort's Horcruxes. He's gone from timid and fearful to one of the bravest wizards the world has ever known. Not my daughter, you. Yeah, you know the line. The moment that put Molly Weasley up in the ranks with Sigourney Weaver's Ripley from Aliens and forced parents to have a serious conversation with their kids about which words they were and weren't allowed to use. Like Neville, Mrs. Weasley isn't necessarily one of the most powerful witches in the general sense. For most of the series, she expertly plays the part of the doting, loving mother. Not only to her own kids, but also to Harry. Then Deathly Hallows comes along and Molly, not content to wait on the sidelines, joined the fray. Not only did she join the ranks of the powerful witches and wizards that cast a protective spell over Hogwarts at the battle's start, she was the one who ultimately took out Bellatrix Lestrange. As we've already pointed out, Bellatrix was a formidable foe, but she was no match for a furious mother protecting her children. Another unlikely but indisputable addition to this list is Professor Phileas Flitwick. Hogwarts's charms master started off his education as one of the best students in his class, rivaling even Albus Dumbledore. His reputation as the most knowledgeable charms master in all the world precedes him. But it's not all about charms for Flitwick. When he was younger, he was also a big dueling champion. While he spent most of his time in the series teaching students, we got to see his awesomeness unleashed during the Battle of Hogwarts in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. And just look at that most Gosh, that may be the greatest magic trick of all. Rufus Scrimmager is another solid candidate for one of the most powerful wizards in the world. When the original Minister of Magic, Cornelius Fudge, was forced to step down, it was to the relief of many in the magical community. Fudge had proven incapable of reassuring anyone that he was a decent leader, or someone worth following into battle. Scrimger was a welcome change of pace. Prior to his appointment as Minister, he served as the head of the Auror Department and was just the kind of person capable of making people feel at ease, even if it was all a ruse. While he wasn't as highly regarded as someone like Mad-Eye Moody, his noble nature was admirable. Even in the face of brutal torture at the hands of the Dark Lord himself, he stood his ground, providing no aid. It may have cost him his life, but it cemented his reputation. Sirius Black, one of the four Marauders, was initially believed to be one of the most ruthless wizards out there. While this turned out not to be the case, it didn't make him any less deserving to be on this list. As a young wizard, he proved intelligent and capable. He even managed to master the art of becoming an Animagus. No easy feat for even the most accomplished Witcher wizard. Even when he was in Azkaban, Sirius managed to hold out against the terror of the Dementors, which speaks to his incredible will and courage. He held his own in many duels up until the day he was bested by Bellatrix Lestrange. And through all of this, he served as an incredible mentor and parental figure to Harry. Barty Crouch Jr. is one of the most sinister wizards to ever live. His father, Barty Crouch Sr., served as the head of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement for many years. After the first Wizarding War, he was relegated to being in charge of the Department of International Magical Cooperation, but not before he sentenced his son to Azkaban. Barty Crouch Jr. didn't take after his father in the slightest. A ruthless Voldemort supporter, Jr. managed to best Mad-Eye Moody and infiltrate Hogwarts disguised as the famous Auror. He was one of the first wizards to escape from Azkaban in the prison's 300 years of existence, and his actions played a direct part in the resurrection of Lord Voldemort. And this brings us to our last entry on this list, Aberforth Dumbledore. Aberforth spent many of his later years as something of a recluse living in his brother Albus's shadow. And while Albus was undoubtedly more powerful, that doesn't mean Aberforth should be left by the wayside. He's proved himself as more than capable on numerous occasions. When he was younger, he managed to take on both his brother and Grindelwald at the same time, holding his own in impressive fashion against two of the most powerful wizards to walk the earth. During the Battle of Hogwarts, he proved his 
worth, conjuring an incredible Patronus and surviving to the end of the fight. Not only that, he provided aid to Harry, Ron, and Hermione when they needed to infiltrate the castle. Done already? But there are so many more amazing witches and wizards to go! Oh well, this'll have to do for now. But what do you think, Potterheads? We want to know who you consider to be the most powerful witches and wizards in the Potter universe. Are there any we missed? Are there any you'd kick off of this list? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There's plenty of great content for all Potter lovers, and subscribing is the best way to keep up with all of it. Until next time.